Welcome to our sample lecture presentation, and thank you for your interest in EV education. Currently there are 14 lectures, all pre-recorded and ready for presentation to your class. Battery management systems, BMS components. Now let's look at the parts and components that actually do the work. There are differences in the specific hardware components between various BMS systems, but the functional requirements are universal. Here are several examples of some BMS sensor boards. The boards are used in a distributed BMS to acquire and transmit critical data to the BMS computer. The two boards on the left are for large format prismatic cells similar to those that you will use to construct your switch vehicle. The two on the right are actually the same board. One is the single board and the other is a symbol to be used with a pouch style cell. Functionally they are the same. Their footprint will be altered to fit the particular cell they will monitor. Most BMS boards also have a resistor to shunt current from an overcharged cell to assist in the balancing of the pack or bringing all the cells to the same state of charge. This picture is the front of a battery box ready to be installed in a vehicle. Notice the small microprocessor board on each individual cell. Each board is attached at the negative cell terminal and connected to the positive cell terminal to monitor individual cell voltage. The BMS boards are also attached in series to the adjacent board and eventually to the BMS computer. Safety tip, just notice that the pack is actually strapped to the table to prevent it from being knocked off or falling over easily. Here's a close-up of what the BMS board looks like attached to a single cell. Notice that the cell interconnects are not shown. It's very important to remember that connections carrying the most current mount first and the least current mount last. Since the BMS carries no current, it would be on the top of the cell and on top of all other connections to that cell. Here you see the BMS boards attached in series. One board is attached to the negative terminal, the red wire to the positive terminal of the same cell, and the orange wire connects to the adjacent cell. If you look closely, it appears that the terminals or posts are very close to the bottom of the battery box. However, there are there is about 3 sixteenths of an inch between the battery box and the post on the cell. And we also put a 1 8 inch piece of plastic shield that covers the entire front of the box to protect the cells from road dust, moisture, and insulate the cells from all metal. Finally, notice between the most left cell and its neighbor, when the box is completed, the top will hold the cells in a slightly compressed position to prevent the possibility of damage due to overcharge or over discharge. And here is that box. You can see the black ABS plastic in front of the cells that act as an insulator. And you can see that it's somewhat sealed with the gray BMS cables on the left side and the high voltage cable installed and configured for testing. Here's a typical BMS computer. The BMS computer acquires information from each individual cell and monitors for data outside of the pre-programmed normal operating range. For instance, while charging, if a cell exceeds the maximum specified voltage, the charger must be turned off. While driving, if a cell drops below the minimum specified voltage, the vehicle must be powered down. In actuality, there are several steps that the BMS performs prior to turning off the charger or the vehicle. The BMS computer also monitors other factors such as temperature, internal resistance, ground shorts, state of health of the cells, among others. Think about it. What would you want the BMS to do if you're driving your vehicle and it had a cell approaching the minimum voltage? 
you'd want to warn the driver somehow. Maybe you could cut the maximum battery drain to increase range. What other ideas, what else should the BMS do to help the driver know what's going on? Here's the BMS computer with the cables installed. Note the old style serial connection on the top used for programming with your laptop computer. Each cell is connected to the computer via the gray shielded cables on the left. Each critical device controlled by the BMS computer is connected via one of the other connections shown here. Items connected to the BMS computer could include the state of charge meter, essentially the fuel gauge, which is shown in a couple of slides, fans to cool cells while driving or discharging, relays to control the low voltage system of the vehicle, main contactor to stop the vehicle if required, and a charger interface to control charging. The inductive ring is analogous to a clamp-on amp meter, and it's used to measure the current running through a cable. When used in conjunction with a BMS and a fuel meter, you can get an accurate state of charge based on the actual electron movement. As the electrons flow in one direction to power the vehicle, the BMS computer computes the remaining capacity of the traction battery and lowers the state of charge indicator. As the electrons flow the other direction from regenerative braking or charging, the computer adds capacity to the traction battery and increases the state of charge on the state of charge meter. And here is that state of charge meter. The vertical bars indicate the state of charge of the battery pack. In this case, for instance, 10 bars lit indicate a full state of charge. As the state of charge decreases 10%, one less LED is lit. There are five other indicator lights on this particular state of charge meter. Red, amber, yellow, green, and blue. Each light indicates a different operation or critical error. This is typical of a BMS as it does require a method to communicate to the driver. BMS displays are very much more sophisticated as you can see with this not very sophisticated version of a graphical user interface but it's much more readable. You can see the amount of current under the above the amps and you can see the voltage in the pack. It also gives you a state of charge in percentage in the middle and tells you the temperature in kilowatt hours of the pack. And of course smartphones act as BMS displays as well. You can also use them to control such things as um, air conditioning on the vehicle, get it ready to go if it's a hot day. Um, you can check the charger to see if it's complete and you're ready to leave for your next stage of your journey. Um, many other practical applications of the smartphone talking to the car and talking to the battery management system. So now it's time to discuss what would you want the BMS system to do if it was in your vehicle.